Alrighty, so today we're going to be taking a look at Blender. Blender is an open source 3D modeling, animation, and compositing suite, uh, which is available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, uh, BSD, and probably a few other platforms. You can get it from the Blender.org website, as you can see here. And if you run Linux, you're best off getting it from your distribution's package management system. So today we're going to look at making a simple mushroom. Looks a little bit like this one here using some basic modeling techniques. Now step one is going to be to launch Blender. Now the version I'm running today is uh, 2.49b which is a little bit older but most of the interface is still the same so we won't worry about that. Blender has a range of UI customization options. I thought I might just touch on a couple of mine here uh, in case anybody gets confused. Uh, to start with I use the left mouse button for selecting and I use the middle mouse button for panning the view rather than rotating it. In Blender 2.49 you can drag down the top bar to reveal that the other thing that I have different is uh, instead of one single viewport, I split mine up into four sections so that I can have a 3D view, a top view, side view, and a front view. Now how we do that is uh, we right click on the uh, edge of the bar and we choose split area uh, and that allows us to divide up the area below into several sections. So I'll just go through and do that for the rest of them. And I also like to keep the header bars at the top of the top two viewports. Now that we've got our workspace divided up nicely, we can assign views to each of the four viewports that we've created. We can do this by moving the mouse over each of the viewports and pressing a number on the number pad. Number one will make the selected viewport display the front view, number seven, the top view, and number three, the side view. Our 3D view is already there, but if we wanted to create a new one, we can do that by taking any existing view, holding down the shift key, and dragging with the middle mouse button to rotate it out of an orthographic view. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, it's not very important. Okay, to start modeling our mushroom, we're going to press space over one of the viewports. We're going to select Add, Mesh, and Cube. And this will give us a cube in the middle of our viewport, as you can see here. It's not a bad idea to take a few moments to familiarize yourself with how to get around Blender's viewports. The currently selected item is outlined in white, and you can move it around by pressing G, or clicking on any of the three axis handles. We can use A to select, or deselect all, and drag with the middle mouse button to move the views around. Let's select our cube again, and press Tab to enter editing mode. Once in editing mode, we can press A to deselect all of the selected vertices and B to use the box selection tool. We're going to use the box selection tool to select the top nodes in our cube. With these nodes selected, we can press E to bring up the extrude context menu and select region. Move the new region up with the mouse and click to set its position. Repeat this four times and on the fourth time press escape instead of clicking. This will return the newly created region to its original starting position. With the region still selected, press S to scale and move the mouse to scale out and create the base of the head of the mushroom. Extrude this area up three more times using the S key to scale inwards as we approach the top. Let's take a moment to take a look at what we've created. If you use your imagination, or if you have poor eyesight, you can see that we've created a rough outline for the shape of our mushroom. Press tab to leave editing mode and you can see our proto mushroom as a solid shape. Our next step is going to be to add a modifier called Subsurf which will smooth out the shape of the mushroom into something a little bit more realistic. Select the editing panel by clicking on the editing panel button at the bottom of the screen. You can also bring this up by pressing F9. In the third box along, under the modifiers tab, click add modifier and select Subsurf from the list. You should be able to see our mushroom starting to take shape. The default settings of the Subsurf modifier aren't enough though. We're going to change the levels to 3 and the render levels to 4. The first value controls how smooth the mesh will be in the viewport, whilst the second value determines how smooth it will be in our final render. Pressing tab to go back into editing mode, we can see that the original shape that we made is still there. The existing vertices now act as simple controls for the complex shape beneath. Press A to deselect any selected vertices, then press B and use the box tool to select the bottom vertices of the stalk. Press S to scale these out and give our mushroom a good base. Next we're going to use the box selection tool to select each row of vertices in the mushroom. As we select each row, we're going to move and rotate it slightly in each of the three viewports. This will give our mushroom organic twists and curves, creating a far more natural shape than what we had to begin with. To rotate, press R, move the mouse to your desired angle, and click to set the rotation. If you're planning on creating multiple mushrooms, this is a great time to experiment. The changes that you make in this stage would greatly affect the character of the mushroom at the end. If 
feel free to press tab at any time to get a feel for how your mushroom looks without the original vertices over the top. Don't forget that you can use the S key to scale your selected vertices to get the shape you desire. When we're done, our next step will be to move the camera to a vantage point where it can see most of the mushroom. Select the camera by clicking on it, and move the mouse cursor over the 3D viewport. Press the zero key on your number pad, and the 3D viewport will jump to the camera's location. This gives us an idea of the composition of the final rendered image. Press the G key, or use the axis handles to move the camera around the scene. You can also rotate the camera by pressing R. When we rotate, we'll want to rotate the camera relative to itself, rather than to the scene. In the example I'm showing here, I press the X key twice to rotate around the X axis. This makes the camera look up and down. If I wanted to make it rotate from side to side, I could press Z twice. Once you're happy, click the mouse to set the camera's rotation. To fill out our scene a little bit more, we're going to add a ground plane. Press space over one of the viewports, then select Add, Mesh, and Plane. Press S to scale the ground plane, move the mouse, and then click to make it larger. Next we're going to add some protruding spots to the head of our mushroom. With the mouse over one of the viewports, press space, add, mesh, UV sphere. We're going to put copies of this sphere inside the mushroom head. Scale the sphere to make it a little bit larger and move it up inside the mushroom using either G or the axis handles. Using each of the views as necessary, position the sphere so that it just breaks through the edge of the mushroom. When you've got it in place, press shift D to create a duplicate. Move the duplicate to create another spot and repeat as many times as you like. If you find that parts of the sphere are breaking through the mushroom where you don't want them, you can press tab to go into edit mode, use the box selection tool to select the unwanted vertices, and press delete. If it looks like the newly created hole in the sphere is going to be breaking through the surface of the mushroom, feel free to rotate it. If you're only planning on seeing one side of your mushroom, don't bother putting spots on the other side. It'll save you a little bit of work now, and it'll speed up render times later on. Make sure you don't put your spots out too far. If they're far enough out, they'll start casting a shadow and look a little bit weird. When you're happy with the number of spots that you have, select the mushroom by clicking on it and return to the editing panel at the bottom of the screen. Click the Set Smooth button in the first box. This will smooth out the currently angled surface of the mushroom. Select all of the spots using the box selection tool. If you select the mushroom at the same time, you can use the box selection tool with the middle mouse button to deselect the mushroom. With all the spots selected, click the Set Smooth button to make them smooth as well. Our mushroom is finally complete. Bring up the Scene panel by clicking on the Scene button at the bottom of the screen, or by pressing F10. We can render our mushroom and its seam by clicking the large render button. For this example, I've shortened the amount of time that it takes to render. Depending upon how powerful your computer is, this might take a couple of minutes. If it looks good, you can close the render window, click on the File menu, and choose Save Rendered Image. At the bottom of the screen, give your rendered image a name, and click the Save JPEG button. It's taken us less than 10 minutes to come up with this stylized mushroom. If we wanted to expand on this, we could add more mushrooms, textures, lighting, and end up with something like I have here. The grass is created using a particle effect, but the rest of the scene is modeled using the same techniques that we've used here. There are plenty of other techniques for creating simple and complex models in Blender. 
If you're interested in exploring more, the Blender.org website has a number of links and resources in its community and education and help sections which are well worth checking out. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Thanks for watching.